don't worry, I got cancer. Yeah, exactly. That's all you said to him. Mm-hmm. Oh, so, that was his excuse for the whole two. Months. Oh, absolutely. So Are you ever, kidding me? Did you have cancer before you met him or after? Before, I'm pretty sure he gave me the cancer. Oh. No. <laughs> how do you feel about that, Jamie? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, you don't want to know how I really gave it to him. Oh. But anyways, <laughs> yeah. See, I told you we couldn't get into those type of jokes yeah, here, again. Here I told you, jokes. I, I told do you, it, don't though. start us hey, on I those didn't jokes. Do it, here come the jokes. I didn't do it. Uh, so today's episode is just a little bit different. We went to Connecticut and we were locked in with Ian Bick. So as we recorded in Ian's studio, we just talked about, you know, whatever came into our minds, man. This is a general conversation between three guys about what's going on in their lives and what has gone on in their lives, man. Just kick back and relax. You know, you might learn a little something. You actually get to see me without something on my head, which many people haven't. So if that's something you'd like to see, stick around, check that out. And uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. All those things help my little channel out, man. Sure appreciate you being here. And uh, strap in for this episode of Chopping It Up. I'm thinking we'd have a therapy we session. Had, what, yeah, right. right, right, <laughs> no, right, right. Well, well, whatever you want. It's your show, it, Jamie. It's intro, like, uh, Jamie like, we're basically getting you to interview us. Because ah, so you're using me. You're using right, me. But you want to enter? I'm just saying, if you're yeah. down for we'll that, we'll just fuck around. Whatever works. you want, Jamie. Yeah. Right. Why don't I you mean, say hello to everyone on the channel? This is your uh, camera right there. If you want to introduce yourself. What's up, man? Uh, yeah, we're back again. We just came all the way from Virginia. About seven hours, I think. I had a little bit of the roof blow off of my camper. Wait, did it really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. What happened? So first of all, dude that sealed oh, the roof shit. didn't use the right stuff, and it didn't bond, so a lot of that blew off. But also, I had a, uh, a, a sun <laughs> a skylight that I put on, and uh, we went in to cook some sausage and stuff. And I looked up, and I was like, damn, that was covered because it was all black. I didn't want no light to come in, right? Put my arm up right through the hole, straight out of the top of the camper, bro. You guys are cooking sausages in the camper? Yes, yeah. absolutely. On a skillet. Eggs, Wait, too. you have a skillet inside the camper? Yes, sir. It's called a grill it. But no shower? No shower. No. So I tore the shower and everything out, man. So when you I bought left that, that shit in there, I know, but it, was, <laughs> it took up so much room, and the floor was rotted out under the shower. So mm-hmm. I had to take everything out in order to redo the floor, anyways. So I just made that whole room, which is like ninety six square feet, into the studio itself. Tell people what you've done, like for the tra- for the for the um, the trailer and what because ex- it's right. cool. You sent me pictures. Like yeah. I remember hearing about it last year. You just said you had this idea. And sometimes people just say ideas to Sam, but you right. actually put it together. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, I found the uh, – it's a toy hauler camper that's 24 feet long, and I bought it for like 650 bucks off a buddy of mine that had been sitting in his back lot for about five years. So when they tore the air conditioner out, there was a hole in the ceiling and rotted out the floor. You know what I mean? That's why I got it so cheap. So I had to take out the shower, the toilet, the heater, the air conditioner, uh, the – you know. Everything that was inside of it, I just gutted it. I'm getting ready to make a video where I'm going to have everything from where it started when it was all black on the outside and we power washed it and broke it all down. And yeah, man, I put new floors, you know, uh, new walls, soundproofing on the ceiling, a couple little chairs, a couple mics, you know. It looks fucking podcast. sick. Yeah, it looks and awesome. I can't wait to get you in. We're going to get you in there yeah. in a little bit. We're going to check it out. Yeah, you got my fee, 10 grand. Uh, no, but uh, I, can't, I can't believe I he didn't mention how stamps. much I helped with it, though. Oh, well, yeah. That's lies. crazy. Lies. That's straight lies. He showed up one day and watched me work. Okay. But to be fair, he did have cancer. So how do you guys know each other? Uh, we met, uh, let's In see. prison? No, no. no. <laughs> but we have been bunkies. Yes. Wait, really? You guys yes. were yes. bunkies? Yes, we've been Facts. bunkies at I, one point in time. But you were in time. federal, though. Yeah, but in the state. Yeah, uh, on a probation violation, I came back and when he shipped me across the road, he was on top bunk. Yeah, or no bottom bunk. I was actually. bottom bunk. I let him have top gave, bunk or he, let him have the bottom bunk. He gave bunk. me the bottom bunk, and he I had, had to one stay day. one night. I got out the yeah. next day. So, what, what was your impression when he walked in the cell? That's where you guys met. In yeah, the- I was like, "What the f- are you doing here, dude?" <laughs> you know, actually, yeah. it was in uh, the first the first pod when I saw him. Like, uh, I saw him through the you know the window that's like this big, and I was like, "Oh, gee." hell are you doing here you know and he gave me the rundown i was like all right cool and i got moved that day and i think he got moved a few days later yeah actually ended yeah. up in the same cell anyways you guys yeah. check any paperwork for each other uh no no actually, I never was had. this before your fed bid no so it was after my fed but we didn't meet till i got you, out you so were i got a out of work checker yeah, by, yeah. <laughs> by that point he was yeah, experienced absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. but when we got out on the street we started working together when i got out in 09 so okay. we started doing some side and this shit together and we mm-hmm. were both clean at the time i think you had just got straight yeah 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 so we were both clean back then and then you know of course we got back into the depths of addiction again mm-hmm. that whole clip went virally you on my channel about mm-hmm. how 
you know what happened when they put a uh, chomo in my cell yeah, bro. <laughs> that that story was incredible bro it is incredible right <laughs> because uh these people are not supposed to do that like they're no. supposed to protect that dude for one thing right mm -hmm. and they're not supposed to put him in there because if i do something to him then that affects me right yeah but instead you put a chomo in my cell and then they made a bet they made a bet that he was only going to be in there for 48 hours or some shit and they lost. Oh, dude, yeah. You know, I met that someone was that was kind of like like you, um, where you weren't like a title of a shot caller, but you, because you were like, you were on the block and like you gained respect and like the COs were coming to you. Mm -hmm. um, I met someone like this, but on the state level, yeah. he was just on the show. His episode hasn't come out yet. Um, but I was like, so were you like a shot caller or not? He was just an old head that was a good dude that the COs respected, the inmates respected and kind of like, maintained authority like mm -hmm. stick the glue on together mm -hmm. which is honestly how jd wants to be described we mm -hmm. just we just glorify putting like he's a shot caller mm -hmm. uh he doesn't like that though right um we gotta get you and jd to lay in a room together Bro, is that the truth because yeah. i tried to do a, a thing with him one time and i couldn't get the zoom to work or something we could get the headphones no nah, don't do zoom. when he's in this crazy. area you come back yeah, out facts. here Let's do that. yeah you know Absolutely. i'm trying to get him back out here to film some skits and stuff no shit, so when he comes that. back that'll be a great episode of the two of you guys together yeah i would love that and then you know yeah for sure that. i just like to meet him and talk to him and chop it up with him either way you know do you have hair under that content you have hair under that? Yeah, yeah. Some. I've always wondered what you look like. Yeah, I got, a little bit, I got a big old bit. I got a big old bit in the back of my head right there, too. What is that from? Uh, Well, everybody mom thought dropped that, him. Everybody thought that it was like my dad wouldn't leave my mom alone. Yeah. And she was pregnant. And he kind of left a bit. Uh, uh, but I never want to describe it that way. So one thing I do want to talk about, my buddy Pugie. Okay. So did I tell you anything about Pugie? <laughs> Uh, from the last one, Piggy was my co-defendant on the robbery. Yeah, you said there was a guy so, that robbed it, and you guys came up with the idea with uh, the, the ski mask or whatever. One right. of Piggy was the one that left the mask behind. Right. So there's a whole and, video that I broke down where, on my channel where I did like uh, an edit where I'm like in a jail cell and shit, and I think it turned out pretty cool. But anyways, Piggy was my co-defendant. So about a month ago, I get a call that he overdosed and died. Wait, he died? Yeah. Oh, so shit. this is my childhood friend, bro. Like, my childhood friend from 15, 16 years old, I love this dude. I hadn't seen him in years because he was out there doing math, doing fentanyl, doing shit like that. So I got away from him because I didn't want no parts of that. But I still knew what was going on with him. I still knew he was getting high and all that shit. So anyways, he gets a bad batch of fentanyl and some meth, and it kills him and his girl. Okay? So they're living with his mom. Okay? His mom's like 82 years old. I think she just turned 82. Living with his mom, his mom comes back into the back and finds him on the bathroom floor with his pants pulled down, his ass hanging out. So he was taking a shit, something, whatever. I don't know what's going on there. Then the girl's in the bed. Mom's crazier than hell, bro. Mom grabs a broom and starts beating him with a broom, telling him to get up. Because this is how she's treated him his whole life. You know what I'm saying? Get up, Popper, get up. She would beat on him. So she's beating him with the broom until she realizes he's dead. Mm. And then she looks over and sees the girlfriend in the bed with blue lips. Because she's been yelling at her to get up and get him up. But they're both laying there dead, bro. So anyways, this is you know what happens. is She has no money. There's no funeral. There's none of anything like that. Uh, and when the state was supposed to help her with the burial, she made $19 too much from her monthly check that the state gives her. So they declined to give her like the other two grand or something that she needed to get his ashes. So what I did, I got on Facebook, and I, I raised some money. I had people that donated a, a, a can of bag of goodies. It was all cannabis stuff, but it was like Eddie's and all this kind of stuff. They donated that. They donated 100 bucks. We had already given her 500 from the, a little celebration of life type thing I did at a local bar where we just talked about him. I did a little live and, you know, talked about his life, whatever, because, you know, you live your whole life being in drugs like that, bro. It affects everybody. The mom's affected. The kid's affected. She's standing there crying. Uh, but anyways, you know, we sold that stuff. I think I raised like a, it was like $1,110 I raised to give her to get his ashes out, you know? And it's, it's, a, it's a small community of people that I have on Facebook that's in my local area, which is the same people I've been shooting these podcasts with. It's all these people, they've been through addiction. You know, some of them is heroin, some of them it's alcohol, some of them it's pills, some of them went through the oxy stuff, some of them are 60, some of them are 20. You know, males, females, all of it, but it's the underdog story, you know what I mean? Because... Seeing how all that affected him and his family, bro, we talked about legacy before. Remember we talked about legacy and Viking ship burials and all that shit we talked about? Look at the legacy my man left behind. I don't like that idea for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I, that affected me a lot. 
And I couldn't stop thinking about him being dead, even though I haven't talked to him in 10 years. This was my stick, man. You oh, know you know hadn't talked saying? to him for that long? Yeah, bro. Last time I seen him, was high as hell. He jumped on my motorcycle and was like, yo, I love this, blah, blah, blah. Ain't seen him since. Mm-hmm. And now he's dead, and he's like ashes to ashes, bro. Yeah, and people don't realize the effect it has on our families. Right. And the, the people surrounding, community, everything like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. So that's kind of what all this is about, too, man. For me, is uh, I want to start these podcasts because it's it's about that person that can't come out. So since then, I've had so many people reach out. Like I had a chick call me yesterday that her old man's actually going into rehab based on the, the few podcasts that I've done in the last month and following me for this kind of shit. Alcohol, alcohol, alcohol. And now he's going to go in. And like I haven't talked to her since yesterday when he was supposed to go in at 1130. But this is a chick I don't know from nobody, bro. You know what I mean? And I think that's cool. I like that. I like the fact that I can, instead of being that negative influence that me and him would be uh, slinging you an oxy so we could do one for free. I don't want to do that. You know what I'm saying? I want to, I want to lift people up, man. And, and I don't know. It's just like, what am I going to leave behind? And I don't want to leave behind death and destruction and, and people talking about me the way I was. Well, you got the YouTube channel now, which uh, mm-hmm. that leaves behind some legacy. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I want it to be too. And these all these people that I'm doing these interviews with, they'll always be able to come back and check that out too, right? Just like your channel. It's so fascinating, like the idea of doing interviews and podcasts and whatnot, because then um, it lives up there forever. Yes, like that interview with me and you is there forever. It's gonna be there forever. Yeah, like that. That's legacy right there. Just, I think it's cool. Yeah, I dig it. It's cool. and uh, I haven't watched it since you first put it out. You never watched it. I watched it once oh, you watched when it you once. first put it you out, but I haven't watch watched it, it since. <laughs> you don't need to watch I know, it. No, but right, that's the whole point, though, yeah. isn't it? Because if it wasn't recorded, like we couldn't watch it again, but we can. Yeah. So now I can look at the the cussing I did because I cussed that whole day and I swore I come up here and was not going to cuss. I'm not going to sit here and mother F and you know, the whole time because yeah, that just wasn't. Why cool. does it, it matter? Because it's not, it's, it's just, um, you know, my mama wasn't happy with me. Oh, she saw the that. episode. My mama wasn't happy with me for all the cussing. She and, saw know. the episode. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what'd she yeah. think of it otherwise? Uh, she got mad because I didn't mention that she sent money to me in prison. Because wow, all ball. I mentioned yeah. was my dad. Yeah. I know, right? But my mom didn't send me money out. in prison, bro. Oh, <laughs> my mom has always been a major lookout in my absolute. There mm-hmm. goes my mom, yeah, dude. Yeah. She's a fucking gold mine. Mm-hmm. She wouldn't hurt nobody, you know, ever. Like, she's just that type of person. She's a really good hearted person. And I don't want to leave anything behind the same way. Like, I OD'd, you know, whatever it was two, three years ago. And what if I'd have been laying there dead? You know, saying what my mama done then. That's not cool with me. I'm just mm-hmm. not cool with that. Yeah. I'm yeah, his come mom's out of good that people, life. dude. Like, I, ro- I walk in the house for years. It's been, hey, mom, hey, when? She's always like, Eric, how you doing, honey? You want something to eat? <laughs> how long? Always. How often do you guys hang out with each other? Well, back when I was living in the same town, it was every day. Mm-hmm. And since I got out, I moved out to another county, which is about an hour away. So, like, I come down once a week. Mm-hmm. And out. you did an interview on his uh, channel. Yes. Yes, I did. And what was that about? Uh, well, you know, f- it was about kind of my story, you know, robbing stores, doing drugs, going, getting locked up, the stuff that goes on getting locked up, moving K2, moving Suboxone, uh, moving Suboxone from prison to prison. And Go check that one out. Yeah. One yeah, of the best I, stories ever, bro. I pooped in my hand, my own hand. I can't talk about it though, but diarrhea. Wait, what do you mean you can't talk about it? Yeah. Well, yep, I, gotta I go to my it. channel for that one, Ian. <laughs> you gotta go over there to see that one. Best story uh, ever, bro. Like I've never heard anybody talk about pooping in their hand. I, I mean, mean, it's just the first time though. No, I, you I gotta can, go to his channel. Yeah, yeah you no, definitely, they definitely no, do, you right? Gotta go to his channel. Definitely you, gotta go you, check you that out. You can't tell. You can't tell. No, there's there's more than one. Unfortunately, I've got a different one though. Yeah, there's an older one on there too. But yeah, man, he's been through it as well. And then what you find out while you was in jail? Oh, that I had cancer. Yeah. How, do you, how do you find out that? Like, uh, what? man, I went to uh, when I hit not away for receiving. You know, I had like a lump in my neck, and it'd been there for years. And I didn't pay any mind to it. I'd asked a couple doctors along the way, like in Winchester lockup. They were like, "Oh, it's just a reactive lymph node. You're fine." And uh, so then I get to not away, and the, and the doctor's like, "You know, I'd like to run some more tests. I don't really have enough time with you because you're only here for 45 days." Wherever you touch down next, make sure you follow up with the doctor for it. So I followed up with it. They sent me for a sonogram, which then said, okay, now you have to go to an ENT. And oddly, you know, at the time, they're like, well, we have to schedule you to see an ENT. Two months goes by. Nothing happens. My old lady gets on the phone with DOC, tears them apart. I actually get a letter in the mail from DOC telling me when my date to go to this ENT is. Before the facility even tells me, this is after I, I'm in, you know, I'm in a level one at this point. Mm-hmm. I've left Nottaway. And uh, 
So from there, I did the they they put a scope up my nose and down my throat, very uncomfortable. And uh, then they did uh, uh, what do you call it? The biopsy, and they did the biopsy without like any kind of anesthetic. They took a needle, a big needle, and stuck it slamming my neck while I'm watching them, bro. I'm like cuffed on this table, and I've got like you know those blue like papers they put on you. It's just like draped there and covering part of my face. And I'm like, there's a camera right there. I can see them. And the feeling of a needle in your neck like that and pulling stuff back out, oh, so unpleasant. I can't even describe it. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, then they came back, and uh, I guess it was a few weeks before I left, or maybe a month or something. Uh, they said, well, and I walked down to the nurse's office. They're like, we're not supposed to tell you. I said, do I or don't I? You know, like, just tell me. I'm sitting here waiting. And uh, she goes, well, yes, you do. I was like, okay, now what? You know, and uh, so then I had to go back to, to, man, there were so many doctors, dude. And honestly, I've got chemo brain, so I get, like, total holes where I'll just pause and be like, uh, what just happened? I forget where I'm at. And, uh, dude, on the Friday, let's see, I think I left on a Monday. It was the Friday before I left. They were taking me to a doctor's appointment the last time that I'd have one there. Dude, they wreck the car. The cops wreck. I'm in the back seat of the car, okay? And there's this one CEO. Both of them were cool dudes. You know what I mean? Big guy in the front sitting shotguns asleep. Okay? I see the car start doing this over the line. And I'm like, uh uh. You know, and then I just see it like we're we're hitting the guardrail no matter what. Dude, he hits the guardrail, bounces off. So the driver then wakes up. You know, he's like, uh, uh, what was that? And they're asking each other what it is. And I'm in the back going, you just hit the fucking guardrail, <laughs> moron. You know, like, really? So It's amazing the people that even take better. care of us. And, and, you know, I mean, you're in jail. And these are the people that are supposed to be looking for your life. And they're, they're sleeping. Driving. <laughs> they're like three miles down the road when they decide to call it in to, to, to the facility, right? And they're like, well, pull over and call the state police. Dude, this state trooper shows up. I'm in the back of the car. When the state trooper gets there, they finally say, hey, are you okay? Really? So then the state trooper never gets out of his car. He's supposed to get out and check on the passenger. He never gets out of the car. And I sit there and listen to him say, well, I'm not going to give a ticket to somebody else in law enforcement. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because we're way down in Southern Virginia, dude. Like, it's a whole different language out there. It took me a good month before I could decipher anything anybody said. <laughs> like, they'd say my name, and I'd be like, I'm really not sure not what he really. just said, you know? <laughs> yeah, it was a wild ride. So then what happened with cancer? Yeah, so then I got out, and uh, there was about, and I almost had to start the process all over again. It was crazy, dude. I had to go back to another ENT, get scoped again, then get a PET scan. Holy dude, it was nuts. Shit. I got two CAT scans, a PET scan. I mean, I was getting tested left and right. And uh, then when they finally showed me the PET scan, I was in the radiation doctor, their office. Dude, I counted 10 in my neck. Like, and they're all like, it's nothing. You know, and as the PET scan's rolling down, I'm like, whoa. You know, like, and my mom's in there, in there and she's just, like, trying not to cry. But uh, so after that, uh, they gave me uh, two months. I had to do chemo once every three, every three weeks. I'd have to do chemo. But the round of chemo that they were giving me, like, uh, some people get chemo every week. But it's kind of like a low dose. You know what I mean? So they'll get a little sick, but, you know, they'll be all right. But the reason they do that is because it's longer-term treatment. With me, they decided to go really aggressive, so they'd give me, like, a month of chemo at one time. So every three weeks, I would be down for the count for an entire week. Like, I would, I'd make it for about 12 hours after they did the chemo, and then I'm done. I can't remember the entire week, and apparently I'm up around talking to people and everything else. I remember none of it. I also had to do radiation. This was the worst part. So the radiation, they cooked all this, like especially right. It's here. like a microwave. Just yeah, absolutely. Your and flesh, dude. Blisters down my throat, in my mouth. They were like, and you know, I'm such a dumbass because they tell me every step of the way what's gonna happen, and I'm like, eh, it's not gonna happen to me. So, and then I'm doing, I'm doing this the entire time. You know, oh no, I'm not gonna have to do that. Every step of the way, what they said would happen, happened. Every step of the way, I had to do it. So uh, 
Like even now, I can't grow hair down my neck. Yeah, it's gone. You don't have any scars or anything? Like no, that. no, thankfully. Man, I'll tell you what. I saw some people that had the same kind of cancer. Bro, they'd be red. Like, they'd look like something out of a like a Cowboys and lucky. Indians movie, bro. Holy it was terrible. I was always the youngest person in the room, too. It was crazy. No kidding. Like, in the chemo suite, youngest person. In radiation, youngest person. So I went to radiation every day for two months, except on weekends. They, you know, obviously they need a break. How do you think the treatment was uh, by the prison? Prison? Yeah, like... Insufficient. Yeah. Absolutely inadequate. They treat us like animals, bro. No, but it's, like in regards to the cancer aspect, did you get anything special? Any no. special treatment? Nothing. Abs uh, no, no, definitely not. I think and what he was also happened, released before he got treatment. Yeah, I, okay. I got lucked out. I mean, you know, they when they stutter-stepped me for two months, I think it helped me out because if the cancer treatment had been anything like the biopsy treatment... Because usually that biopsy would require some sort of of uh, anesthetic, mm -hmm. something, nothing. They were like, ah, just go ahead and do it. Don't worry about him. And I'm like, oh, okay, let's do it, you know. And, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it's tragic, actually. Like, they, I think what they would have ended up doing was sending me to Deerfield Penitentiary, which is a hospital prison. They, they've got a couple of those in Virginia. Because I, was, I wasn't in the feds. I was in the state. And... Uh, yeah, it was it was horrible. It was horrible, man. I'm telling you, it was it was you know medical medical stuff getting treated in prison and whatnot is no joke, bro. You don't want it. Wow, it's it's terrible. And then on top of that, check this out. I'm in a level one, which means they literally let me out to like pick up trash or work in a farm with no cuffs, no leg irons, no nothing. Every time I've got one of these doctor's appointments, I look like Hannibal Lecter walking into a doctor's office. The doctor doesn't come to you. You got to go to them. So I'm walking in, you know, and I mean like full on DOC shackles with the, I don't know what that the box, box. Is. yeah, with the box the on black it. Box? Yeah, it's oh, a black box. Yeah, the black box. They thought you were dangerous. Man. I'm they telling black you, box leg here. irons, everything, you know, and like, and I'm, and you got to wear orange too. You don't wear their normal colors. You wear all orange, and I'm like, man, I'd walk in and you just see these people looking at you like, oh. I'm like, don't worry, I've got cancer. Cool. <laughs> don't worry, I got cancer. Yeah, exactly. That's all you said. To me. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was his excuse for the whole two months. Oh, absolutely. So Are you have, kidding me? Did you have cancer before you met him or after? Before? I'm pretty sure he gave me the cancer. Oh. No. <laughs> how do you feel about that, James? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, you don't want to know how I really gave it to him. Oh. But anyways. <laughs> yeah, see, I told you we couldn't get into those type of jokes, yeah, here, Ian. I told you. Jokes. I, I told do you it, don't though. start us hey, on those jokes, do it, bro. Here the jokes. I didn't do it. Uh, but yeah, that's not even the worst part of it, though. Once he finishes all this treatment, then what do you got to do then? He gets all his treatment done. He spread them. Nice no, no, way no. to get in there. <laughs> right. Oh, wait, probably the wrong choice of words. <laughs> he spread them. So <clears throat> what are you talking about after treatment? The whole mind fuck. You had to wait. Oh, yeah, absolutely, dude. I'm brain dead. Hey, like, no swearing. Oh, yeah, right, dude, right. Sorry. I may, Sorry. I may have cussed a little. But uh, so, all right, so you, you <laughs> right, got, no, no, you got out, you spread the cheeks. What yes, happens next? Yes, I made that? millions. Okay, you make millions. You had an OnlyFans? <laughs> yeah, wow, I look wish. at that. <laughs> Actually, Jamie, my, what do you got going on, man? I know, man, I told him not to put them feet pics up. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> these guys are sexy feet. feet. <laughs> but uh, yeah, when I when I finished, like they told me, they're like, "Well, after treatment, you know, after your last day of treatment, it's gonna be like three months before, or no, it'll be they said it'll be like thirty to forty five days before you stop having symptoms, and then at that point you'll start getting better. So basically, what they meant is. You're going to feel progressively worse after treatment stops because I'm still not done cooking. The radiation cooked me all the way through. And I mean, like, no kidding, a month and a half later, I still had sores in my mouth and the back of my throat. Dude, there was an entire, like, two to three week period where I couldn't do anything but drink meals like Ensure and Boost and all that. Couldn't eat I was, nothing. I was so, a like weak. a skeleton, bro. Yeah, I yeah, lost He actually pounds. looks decent now because he was fucking about 150 yeah, pounds. Good now. I'm getting there. I'm yeah. still like 20 pounds well, your underweight. Your skin looks good. I mean, yeah. you look healthy. Yeah, he looked really bad. Yeah. But yeah. then they also leave him hanging for a, a month and a half without yeah. even telling him no, if it was it three worked. months. Three months. I had to wait three months after treatment just to go back and get scanned again to find out if it was gone or if we were going to have to do it again. Mm -hmm. And they were kind enough to let me know, well, if you have to do it again, we can't give you radiation because it'll kill you. Like I'm like, wait a minute. So Be what options does that, that leave? Yeah, they're like, well, you did chemo and surgery. And I'm like, uh, you said it was like this cluster tumor and it couldn't be surgically removed. So, right, but now you want yeah. to give me surgery. But now you're going to talk me into this. I'm like, oh, man, so I got to sit there for three months. And I'm telling you, it absolutely screws with your mind for three months. And they're like, 
man, I'm not making any plans because who knows, I could be dead in three months. I have no idea what's going on. So then I went back and, you know, it was it was wild, man. I went to uh, the appointment with my mom and the old lady and the doctor says, and he walks in the room, I said, so is it there or is it gone? And he goes, it's gone. <laughs> and I was like, cool. And they're crying and they're all like, you know, Bleh! and I'm just kind of like, can I go now? Because I'm really tired of being in this office. Why do they call um, girlfriends like old ladies? Where does that come from? Well, one thing about a man that calls his old lady's old lady, he's going to protect her. Mm. Believe that. If she's my old lady, you ain't getting nowhere near her without going through me first. I imagine it came from bikers. Yes. That's, yeah. that's where it came from? Yeah. I would believe so, too. Yeah. And but I, I've been saying that since I was 15. You have an that's old lady? Or Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We don't hear about Mrs. Fultz at all. Uh, yes, that's because her name's not Fultz. Yeah, she's We've been cool. together like she's... 10 years, man. We're just really? not married, but we're getting ready to buy a house. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're looking into buying do? a house right now. She uh, work, runs on a clean, or works in a cleaning company. Okay. She like 1099s, her own stuff, but uh, goes from one of the same guys James works. We work for mm -hmm. James. James's yep. wife runs a cleaning company, mm -hmm. so she started working with her. And what about you? You have one? What? An old lady? Yeah, I got an old lady. Th yeah, like she's an actual awesome. old lady? Yeah, okay. like she's my old lady. Like she's got three kids. Uh, How long you know. have you guys been together? Well, we met before I got locked up, and uh, she stuck it through. Kind of. <laughs> Briefly, we met, and then like I'm the type of dude that if I'm fucking up or excuse me screwing up, I don't come around. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You won't hear from me. my family. Won't hear from me. He doesn't hear from me. You know, like I told him last time. I'm like, I'm getting ready to go to jail, dude. And he was like, What do you mean? I'm like, I'm going to jail. So. Um, and two weeks after that, I was in jail. But yeah. uh, brought me his title, his car, and all his yeah. paperwork before yeah. that. Yeah, I had, I was, I, I was, I already knew it was coming because you know I had started messing around with fentanyl, which I'd never done before. You know, so it was off to the races. So anyhow, I ghosted her. I'm in for about two months, and I'm like, man, I wonder when you know fog starts to clear a little bit. I'm like, wonder what's going on with her. So I give her a call, and we just started talking, and she, you know, rolled with me through the whole bid and. I moved in after I got out. And she bought us tickets to Falling in Reverse. Facts. You ever heard of Falling in Reverse? No, what is that? It's a band. Dude, you got to listen to them, bro. They're awesome. You got to check them out. How yeah. she it's feel, definitely heavy. How she feel about the Cheeks action? I mean, she's she she she's, suspects it. Yeah, right. But we don't let her know for sure. So are you guys giving her a cut? Well, I try and, I mean, when I walk in the door, I automatically have to hand her any money I have. You okay. know, she pats me down when I come in okay. just to make sure. I feel like we believe one of the biggest things is if we can make fun of ourselves, we should be able to do anything. Absolutely, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because Absolutely. we're just going to laugh about dumb shit. I make mm -hmm. fun of myself Some people, all the time. Right. You know, people paying are, for protection, extorted, right. McLovin, but it's, it's real. Shipping. It's real, McLovin, right? It's real talk, man. Yeah. 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 It's, I like there's that. no fakeness to it. Um, the whole cancer thing with him, I made fun of him the whole time. Mm, well, that's, all, that's all I mean. Dude, no, I, well, no. I actually... But I made fun of him because we both understand that making fun of each other was the only way to make him not be depressed about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, we would laugh. Dude, I'm telling you, yeah, all I mean, you do is think about it all the time. I mean, like every waking moment, you're like, just it'll randomly be like, mm, mm, or I'll go to eat something, it hurts my throat, it'll scratch my throat all the way down. Mm, yeah, I can't imagine, man. Yeah, it sucked, dude. It sucked. I was a week away from having a feeding tube installed. Like, it would have, if, if treatment had gone one more week, I definitely would have had a feeding tube. Did you 100%. have to, do you still take any medication or anything now? No, no. I actually, uh, Man, I took a buttload of meds when uh when when I was when I was sick, and uh, at one point they even gave me fentanyl, and I came back and was like, I don't want this, just because I knew that like it opens up like a whole other realm. So they kept me on a on a different painkiller, and you know, I actually took myself off that one and went and got on Suboxone because I was like, man, I've been on this stuff for months. You know what I mean? There's no way, you know, with pharmaceuticals being what they are, real pharmaceuticals, the kick sucks. So I got on some boxing for that, and they had me, they gave me a weed card, you know. And I'm telling you, it was the only way I could eat. Wow. The absolute only. It was actually out of all the drugs that I had to take, it was probably the best one for cancer, like because chemo, chemo is really disorienting, and like pots is kind of a little bit dissociative. So I would get stoned, and then I'd tell myself that I'm I'm just stoned. It's not the chemo messing with my head. You know what I mean? It was just kind of tricking me. So like stoned, I can deal with. But, like, just feeling disoriented and, you know, discombobulated all the time from cancer, you know, and chemo, it's, it sucks. You know, that's depressing. Well, I'm just stoned. That's all. That's why I'm forgetting everything, you know. And, I mean, no, no, no bullshit. I, I forgot everything. everything. 
everything. Even now. Why are you still smoking cigarettes, bro? You gotta. You, man, you, it was. God uh, give you a second chance, me. man. Well, here's yeah, the thing, I gotta get on your ass about that. I mean, that. I smoke here's, too, but I'm gonna get on him. Here's, more. here's the thing about that, though. No uh, excuses. No, no. It actually, for no, me, no excuses. In my head, it was how I gauged how I felt because I tried to smoke throughout the whole process. And there was probably a good three weeks where I couldn't smoke at all. And I start taking these patches and putting them on me, right? And I'd make it about three days with the patch, and then I'd put on another one, and I'd throw up. And, you know, everything being what it is at the time, I'm thinking to myself, it's this patch. You know what I mean? Because I just put it on, and then all of a sudden I get sick to my stomach, and I throw up. So I step down on the patch, take, take the next step down. And uh, three days later, throw up again. Like, man, and I hate throwing up, dude. Worst thing in the world for me. So, uh, yeah, I would, as as after treatment finished, you know, my old lady smokes too, so, you know, I'm going to blame her a little bit for this. But You're scapegoating right exa- now. Ac- absolutely, dude. He's good absolutely. at it too, bro. <laughs> By the end of this but, conversation, you'll be the reason he smokes. Well, I mean. I see that's the direction we're, honest, we're heading mm-hmm, down right now. Mm-hmm. If we're honest with each other, you kind of are. Mm-hmm. See, it's all my know? fault. It's never Eric's fault. No. <laughs> but in all seriousness, because I was so used to smoking, like it was a everyday, you know, thing that just going outside and smoking a cigarette was like a big deal to me. You know, just being able to make it down the steps, go outside, smoke a cigarette, you know, and how, how much of the cigarette I could smoke before, because my throat was so messed up, I couldn't smoke if I how wanted about now? to. How about now? No, yeah, you're talking stop. about the past, what got you through. Right. You're See, not that's what he does, yeah, what yeah, he does yeah, bro. Yeah. It's hard to hold him accountable because he's a good talker. What are you talking about? And you said he's a little shy unless you're in the room, huh? Uh, I mean, it's not that he's shy. It's just, you know. Papa's got to control things. Yeah, right. He's got his hand on on my leg right now. Oh, shit. He squeezes on it when he wants to be shy. I make him talk when I want him to talk. (laughs) What are you titling this episode? (laughs) Right, how I make Eric talk. Uh, Two boys. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) right. Two boys in a cup. Two Mm. boys in a McLovin. (laughs) Two boys in a cup. That's (laughs) gross. Oh, yeah. Here, I want to give you this, too, bro. Oh, you got me a gift? I did. Look at this. No way I'm on. Somebody that treats me as well as you do, somebody that answers the phone every time to bring me up here and show me the shit you showed me today, bro. Thank you, my monkey. There's Mm -hmm. no way I would not bring you something. Thank you, man. This is very thoughtful. Yeah, so check it out. Why is there a dildo in this? Oh, oh, right. Is it big (laughs) enough? Cool. Is it still sticky? You know what I've been doing? Um, I love when people bring me stuff. Now everyone's like bringing me stuff, mm-hmm. which is so cool because I just put it around my office and right it like on. contributes and you know promotes yeah. people and everything like that. Yeah, it's yeah. a sticker, right? Yeah. Right. And it's got the QR code on it there. So, oh, so he, he's got an ulterior motive here. He wants me to put that on the front door. Go straight to the channel. We got a sticker. <laughs> what is this? A butt plug? Oh, so hey, open that wraps. up and check the top one out, man. You use wraps? Yeah, for boxing. All right, so open that up. What do you put in this? Check that top one out for me. This one? Yeah. Open the, pull the first one out. Okay. And then unroll it a little bit. Is it going to pop out of it? No, nah, there's nothing going to hurt you, I promise. This one? Yeah, the top one. You see what's in this thing? So right I past, right past that over last, it's uh, Oh, right there, shit, right? this is so cool. You could get these made? Yeah, so I had that made for you. Thank you, locked in. This is awesome, Jamie. So, yeah, I hope you use them. No, I wanted to get you something you could use. I'm going to get I mean? rid of the other ones now. This That's is the only up. ones I can wear. That's this right. is sick. Wow. Thank you, Jamie. Absolutely. That was very sweet of you. Yeah, man. I'm I'm a sweet guy. I'm a sweet guy. <laughs> I've been hearing that for years. <laughs> what do we got here? There's a vibrator. Some, save, oh, save your teefers, man. I want to save your teefers. <laughs> I need to do about these too. Oh, here we go. Yeah, now I go. got something to rock yeah, on the right show. Too, so Absolutely. you know, I here we go. Yeah, yeah, that's what that's what he needed right here. You know you what know? I asked you? I asked you for your size. I hope that fits you. Yeah. No, this is very large. And you got a on the my. I like this quality right here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're good shirts, I man. Like I got a gilded shit. No, because yeah. they shrink too much, don't they? they? They're all yeah. tight around your neck. The neck. I, li- I like this one, man. This mm-hmm. is perfect. Yeah, I'll rock this on my podcast. My man, is that how he spanks yeah, you? I hope you dig it. Well, I'm not actually the monkey in that picture. He is. I don't think so. That's what Jamie. You're gonna tolerate right. this to see <laughs> right. the neck, bro? Do you see the assumption yeah, because yeah. of your size? Uh, we're all we're all monkeys, man. Thank we're you all guys. monkeys. I really appreciate this. Absolutely, bro. I appreciate you making time for us, man. And me. 
<laughs> break no, the shit kidding. down like you have today. You yeah, know what bro. I mean? No, I whatever. Hugs. Seriously, Jamie, just call me if you need yeah, advice yeah. and stuff. You know, I wish someone was showing me for free along the way, but right. I had to figure I had to pay thousands to mm-hmm. figure everything out on my own. So. And I'm kind of, you know, that's where I'm at too, man. It's just like make mistakes and then try not to make the same mistake twice. But uh, Absolutely. yeah, just a little bit of stuff that you showed me, showed me in there in a, what, 30 minutes, man. Yeah. And right. That's a big difference. You. I appreciate that. I show, gotcha, that means a lot. Mr. Spain. And I think, do you, do you feel like that comes from like a, like, was that a prison mentality? Was that something you had before you went into prison? Like I integrity? Think I, I've always just been like a giver. You know, okay. like when someone needs something, because it's like, like I don't know, it's just like silly. Unless I'm actually like giving you something like substantial. Like if you say, hey, edit my podcast or something, that's different, even though I do do that for some people. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, I don't know. Like I, I look at it as like I have my thing. My main thing's my podcast and everything else is just like additional. Right. So if I could help people with that, you know, then... I help people with that. Right, and there's satisfaction in that, right? Yeah, and I also feel like like I'm in the business where like you have the big companies that pay for ad spots, and it's not necessarily taking from a direct customer. So like mm-hmm. it, it's a different type of business where you're not having your average person buy like a ticket to come see you play, or you're not asking your people to do anything. You're asking your viewers and listeners just to watch and tune in. They're giving their time. Mm-hmm. So I'm just giving my time essentially back. And, you know, it's, I don't know, it's just my, just how I am. And I feel like uh, I believe in karma and everything coming circle. And, you know, you get what you, you give out and you put in. So yeah, man. I'm with I, like it. I just do what I can. I'm with that. Chad's another cool one too, man. Good to go I love see Chad, Chad Marks yeah. after this, man. He's Are you guys doing both each other's shows? Or? Uh, I don't know what he wants to do uh, as far as his end. I just want to sit him down and talk about what he does. Uh, I think he's opening a halfway house or something for a re-entry oh, program. Really? Yeah, I think he finally got uh, everything for that, so I want to talk about that too. Yeah, tell him I said hello. I love Chad. Absolutely, yeah, man. Cool cat, man. I haven't, you know, we did a little interview, but I haven't met him yet, so I'm definitely going to Buffalo to see him after this. Oh, you were on his show already? No. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. Actually, I was. We did a Zoom call thing. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I think you guys got connected um, after you went on mine, right? Yeah, well, he knew. He went to Lee County right after I left Lee County. And um, probably not right after I left, but after I left Lee County. And he knew about this incident that happened where the white boys beat up these border brothers. Right? So uh, the guys was in the hole, and something happened down there where the, one of these border brothers handed a knife to somebody. So then the guys send out of the hole that they want the other guys to smash these two border brothers, right? I've only been in the prison for three or four months. I'm still in like A block or whatever it was, the first block on the bottom. Well, the two border brothers come into my cell. So when they come into my cell, now they want to use me to get from breakfast into my block so that they can jump these boys in the block, right? So we go to breakfast. They come back. We're in the block. We're hiding out in the cell. And AJ was, you know, I think he's like a, big name now somehow i don't really know that for sure but he takes and puts two fingers of tobacco in his ass before they come into the block right so he comes in the block two fingers in his ass it's aj and uh damn i can't remember who was with him it was so long ago but anyways this other dude was with him and uh aj gets nervous and aj has to shit so he shits and you know obviously tobacco comes out now the whole thing's canceled right so, yeah, because, you know, he wants to take tobacco to the hole. It's the whole point. Smash these guys, bring us tobacco to the hole. That's what the order is. Uh, and, again, I'm not even in a gang or nothing with these guys. I just know them, started talking to them. Hey, man, let's get in your unit. So, anyways, they come in. Well, that didn't happen. So, the next day, they call me for Unicor work call. So, somehow, I ended up on Unicor work call where I had to go to work at, like, 7 in the morning. So, we're in Unicor work call that day, and about 12 o'clock, the deuces go off. So, they got a hold of these two dudes out on the yard, okay, and beat them within an inch of their life. Helicopter flighted out, kicked them, stomped them, beat on them and everything. And Chad said that when they come into the prison now, when you come to the prison, the warden, the captain, they tell you about that incident. And they're like, if you kick somebody with a pair of boots in my prison, whatever size your boots are, that's how many years I'm going to give you. Mm. So he, Like you know, years additional to your sentence? Yes. Mm-hmm. Like because, he'll, he'll prosecute you. Yes, oh. because that's what they did to AJ, <clears throat> Raz, Mike, and Dylan. That was the four that jumped it while I was in Unicor. Uh, I think AJ got like nine or ten more years. Oh, Mike yeah. got like four or five more years. I think Nate got like nine. And then Dylan, which he wasn't part of their crew. Them guys right there were tight. Dylan wasn't part of the crew, but he was another dude in A unit that kind of took my replacement mm-hmm. when I went to Unicor, right? He snitched on them all. Mm-hmm. Got them all the time, told everything that it was, and he ended up only getting like 18 months. You know what I mean, shit. And they shipped him out of the prison. 
So when Chad went in there, Chad knew about that story. And when he asked me about the story, I was like, yo, bro, I was right there. Like, I missed it by that much. Mm. Literally that much. I missed that from happening. Because it could have been in the unit. Or if I wouldn't have got Unicor the next day, then I, you know. What Unicor what was there? Like, what, what product? They made, uh, we made uh, um, bulletproof vests. For who, the Ooh, Army? Or the Army, the... facts, bro. And we had the little things you had to try in there. I was a quality inspector, so I had to check the stitches <laughs> and all that shit. He was walking with his beard, like a little coat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, I, had, I just had a goatee then. I the just clipboard had a goatee then. just going around and perusing. <laughs> Checking little things, pulling stitches out, uh -huh. sending it back. It was horrible. Yeah, horrible job. specs, too? You're like, let me show Yeah, I, and I definitely wore glasses because I wear contacts. So I definitely wear, I had glasses because in the feds, they won't let you have contacts. Yeah, unless you smuggle them in. Yeah, and, or you got a stigmatization or whatever the hell that thing is. But I didn't have none of that, so I had to order glasses. I hated them. Mm. I still got them. They're all bent up. <laughs> that is too funny. But yeah, man, I missed that shit but just barely. It was crazy. Yeah, so. I still can't believe the craziest part about your story is that you ended up in a penitentiary. I know, right? Yeah, you should not have been in a penitentiary. Just because of the robbery. Yeah. Just because of the violence of the robbery. Uh, and actually, the reason they gave me the upgrade is because I had assault on a... a a security guard mm. outside of Kohl's or J.C. Penney's. It was somewhere at the mall, man. I went in there trying to steal some shit, and they tackled me, and I punched one of them in the face before they beat me up and took me to jail. But that upped my thing, whatever it is, so that you go up in the scale. Because Steven had like five or six assault and batteries, and I didn't have any assault and batteries. You know, that's pukey. He had all these assault and batteries, and he went to a low. But that one thing for me hitting a security guard was like assault and a cop sent me to a mm. penitentiary. That's Nuts. crazy. Yeah, by myself too. Like I didn't go in on no bus. Did you arrive anywhere on buses or? Yeah, I moved yeah. to like seven or eight different prisons. Yeah. See, I never, I never, even, I got on a bus one time from Lee County to Atlanta to Butner, and I was released from Butner. Yeah. But I didn't do the airplane. Did you do the airplane too? Yep, I did Con Air. Right? You Everybody got lucky. That that Con Air fucking sucks. Huh? How bad is that? One? It's pretty bad. <laughs> Con Air and the feds. Your legs gonna fall apart. Plane's bad. Yeah, the wings are like fucking duct tape, man. That's nice. Crazy. Yeah, dude. Fuck that crazy. shit, bro. That was crazy. Yeah. I was like, dude, I'm going to die on this plane. No fun. I know. Yeah, I remember being on the bus, you know, going from, it was like six or seven hours on that bus. That wasn't much fun either. Yeah, the bus rides all chain shackled, brown mm -hmm. uh, lunch bag. Trying to piss going down the road with shackles on and everything yeah. shaking around. Uh, That's yeah, not funny you either. go in there, it's sprayed piss everywhere because everyone just fucking whirled at that dude, puppy. Man, when I got moved to that level one, they had us on this bus, like one of the short buses, with a bucket in the back to pee into. Bucket. No bullshit. How, how can you write that off and say you're doing something? I, I, I was amazed. Like, dude, and it was like a six hour drive. You know what I mean? And they first thing in the morning is when they transport you. And sure enough, they're like, Hey, I got to pee. Dude's like, there's a bucket in the back. We ran into this problem last time. You know? That's crazy, isn't it? Like they couldn't even afford a bus. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, it's nuts, yeah. man. And I got a, I might have a hookup with one of our local sheriffs, man. I want to get in and talk to him. You know That'll I mean? be a good episode for you. Right, because like, like, what are y'all doing? With, with what's with the going buckets. on around here, they, right? They're fucking around like, What are y'all doing? And then, you know, there's other stories that are going on in my area. There's a, uh, a girl that's been missing, man, for like eight months now. Mm. Her name's Nancy Brittner, I believe. You do take her? And she just, yeah. dude, you she you just come her? up missing, though. Like, she leaves a yeah. hotel. Yeah, And she's been she's gone, and nobody can find her. Like, boards. there's nobody, there's no well, whatever. Well, we have a prime suspect sitting right next to us, Jamie. Mm. Wait, hold on. Can I use the cancer thing again? We're going to have to look into this. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's crazy. But I'd love to get on with her family, you know what I mean? Because, like, she's got kids and grandkids, and this woman just disappeared from nowhere. Is that the dude? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then a dude that's been accused of being someone that took her or did something to her a called me and wants to do the podcast. But I'm kind of like, I don't know if what, I want to give this to his you. No, fuck, though. If right. He's He's under accusations. Yeah. And he's already been on like Facebook and stuff talking shit about her. How come they haven't arrested him? I don't know. It's another part that I'm curious about. So the girl's just missing. Missing, bro. Like How she, old is she? Our age. She was in the 40s. She got grandkids. And she wow. didn't run off with a man or anything. Man, who knows, bro? But like everybody in her family oh, says Are the that. cops involved? Who knows? Who knows? And then I got another dude who's supposed to come on that says he was poisoned. By a woman who was a poison expert for animals and stuff. Swear to God. He gets all the way to the point to where the doctors are telling him he's going to die of cancer. She takes out an insurance policy on his life without telling him that, that she took out an insurance policy. They're telling him he's going to die, and then he figures out that she's poisoning him. Mm. And now he's fine. Mm, mm, mm. 
That's why I always wait for the old lady to start eating first. Uh, that's probably a good idea. Or no. <laughs> but yeah, man. Uh, I don't really know what else we'll get into, Aaron. No, this was but, a good talk. It was yeah, fun yeah. talking to the three of us. Something it. different, you know? Yeah. Uh, we It was good just to sit around, talk, record. Yeah, you know, yeah, just BS. Yeah. yeah. Talk about the spanking monkeys. That's it. That's right. That's right. <laughs> All right, cool, guys. Yeah, well, you know, thanks for coming and hanging out. Uh, it was a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Glad Mr. Jamie could come see the, yeah, sh- man. the, the studio. Got, this is awesome, bro. Yeah, like, yeah. I remember the last one. Like, this is way more relaxed. Yeah, the other like one, a- you're in a big open room. And I also don't like doing multiple podcasts anymore. Like, I used to just stack them because right. it was an hour away from me. Mm-hmm. This is better, you know? You do, like, one a day because you can only do so much. It's it's kind of, like, draining to mm-hmm. sitting and talking with everyone. And, you know, we do so many. Yeah, and you have to take a little time for yourself too, right? Do the best I can. I've all, I'm always kind of working. But. Yeah, man. I feel like you get off on working though. That's some, like your drug. Some people are just it's wired weird. like you that. You go after that bag. You, you don't have an old lady. Uh, yeah, I got. I guess you would call her an old lady. Yeah. Okay. Wait, you now, would what would she her, say right? if you called her an old lady? <laughs> well, I mean, we don't use the term terminology "old ladies" out here. I think right. it's a little bit insulting <laughs> it to the, right. the the woman out this oh. way, but. See, and I had to actually. It's not O L D though. It's O L. O L. Old lady. Yeah, yeah old it's lady. not O L D. You're not calling them old. It's my yeah, old lady. Definitely don't put the D in there. That's yeah, no my good. My old lady. Yeah. No. What if she's older? You know. She's I mean, older. mine is older, but yeah, she's mine still an old lady. <laughs> Can't get taken care of by young girls, anyways, man. Young yeah. girls, they don't know shit. Well, awesome. Let's uh, let's check out the camper. Let's do that, man. Yep. So we're gonna ride over and get all set up, huh? Yeah, we'll, we'll go over down the road. Let's just download this footage and then. Uh, Bet. Let's do it. Cool.